Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's been a minute, but I'm back. Thanks for understanding. Today's video is going to be about five different landscapes or landscape elements to include in your landscape painting. Now I have birds on here. You can decide whether or not that is an element, <laughs> uh, but it is a subject that I always tend to include in my painting. Five of them are going to include mountains, trees, grass or foreground, birds, and rocks. These are five different subjects that I always tend to go back to and include, and I thought, well, I will make a video on them. So I hope you enjoy and that you find value in this video, and be sure to like and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I decided to paint were a cluster of trees. Now these trees I always tend to paint as far as style and I feel that they are really great for layering. In this tutorial I decided to switch up my greens to add different values of lighter, more lime greens, and then darker greens. I also tend to uh, pull from cooler tones of greens, so you'll notice that as well. If you like a slow down step by step uh, detailed description on how I do these trees, then go ahead and click the link below. I have done a tutorial on how I achieve different styles of these more wispy uh, trees. But as you can see, I have added lighter values and then in the front, I've added a bit darker. Now to make it darker, all I did was add a little bit of black to my darker greens. It doesn't matter what greens you use. I'll list them below if you're curious, but I always tend to go for deep sap green, pearling green, uh, and uh, black. The next thing I decided to paint were rocks. Now I have added different shapes of rocks and different colors of rocks because not all rocks are created equal and you'll find different rocks that will have moss on them or they will be smooth or they'll be uh, quite textured. Maybe there's dirt on them. It really depends on where you are in your own climate. The colors that I use for these rocks will vary between black, gray, brown, and greens, and then I even add, to emphasize more of those mossy rocks, some dark blue. You can use indigo, you can use olive green, it's really up to you. So that's actually what I'm doing here. I'm using my olive green, fading it into a lighter green, and then to get those shadows, I add indigo. One secret that I do love to incorporate with my rocks, and you can do it with water, and I do plan on creating a video of this in the future, is using those granulated watercolors. Those are tricky watercolors to use, and I find that either people love them or they hate them. <laughs> I am in between, so it, it really depends. So it depends on what I want to use them for. So if you don't know what granulated paints are, they are paints that tend to separate, but not all colors are created equal. I find that the greens or more of the greenish yellows tend to separate and create this beautiful effect, perfect for rocks, in my opinion. Um, and then same with some of the turquoise colors that they have. So I use Daniel Smith watercolors, so I can't speak to any other watercolors, but for Daniel Smith um, materials and paints, the granulated turquoise has been really cool and fun to experiment using water because it creates almost like these ripples. So, but let me know if you're curious um, about incorporating some granulated paints. I'll definitely do a video regardless because who knows my, who might find it interesting to uh, watch and learn about. 
So as you can see, I am using some black and then I use some gray. And when I say gray, it's literally a lighter version of black. <laughs> but of course, you can make your own grays. I tend to not do that because I always struggle with uh, creating enough paint. Um, and then I either make it too warm or too cool, and then I don't get the right shade. <laughs> so I keep it real simple in my paintings. But let me know, are you a fan of color mixing, or do you like to keep it real simple uh, like I do? No way is right or wrong, it's just preference, right? So I let those layers dry, and now I'm adding in a second coat. You'll notice with watercolor, they always tend to dry lighter, which for me is a love-hate uh, relationship because I am an artist who prefers lots of dark depth richness to my paintings, which you can get, I would say, easier in acrylic painting, but I am not an acrylic painter. And I prefer watercolor medium, mainly because I'm not a big fan of a huge mess and when it comes to acrylic I just it's so messy <laughs> that's not a bad thing but it's a, you know I feel like there is a bit more of a dedication to acrylic painting uh, versus watercolor where I can just you know reactivate my paints and not have to worry about cleanup that's what I mean so I use a little bit of dry brushing on this rock and I did do a little bit of it on the top brown rock. I also added in some white. I kind of regretted that. When you add in white, it can get really creamy, which is quite nice, but I was not going for that effect here. But it ended up working out because I was able to blend it, making me think of what you would do in acrylic painting, um, but it worked out, and then I added a little bit more of the black over the white. When it comes to shaping your rocks, you can just look at a reference photo and you'll see that there are many different um, sizes. Now for these rocks, I did not go into shadowing as far as cutting the rock in half to use a bit of shadow to show that there's a shape. So you can have different rocks that will almost look like the rock has a point coming towards you or a point off to the side and you can definitely manipulate your paint to create um, an illusion that you have a three-dimensional rock but again keeping it simple here trying to keep in mind of someone who's just starting out uh, so I wanted to not do that because well one I'm not very good at it <laughs> but two I don't necessarily uh, paint that way so uh, anyway I like to keep things simple now my third subject or element that you can include in your landscapes that I always do are a grassy texture. I decided to do something different here where I distippled. I normally don't stipple, but I thought, well, this is a fun technique and why not? I got this new brush. It's a really cheap brush by artist and uh, it works really well with stippling and I can be really rough on it and I tend to be really rough with my watercolor brushes which I know can be a no-no but letting you know that when I paint I am quite rough so you don't have to be but I just am and I layer it with different uh, hues of greens and then I added in some olive greens and a bit more yellow the yellow that I um, uh, used here was lemon yellow. I do also use yellow ochre. It really just depends on my mood. And then lastly, what I always do while the paint is still wet is I splatter. I splatter in white, I splatter in yellow just to create different texture and maybe there's wildflowers. Um, so really it's up to you what you want to do. My fourth subject uh, are mountains. I love painting mountains almost as much as I love painting trees and they are so much fun. I decided to use my Neptune size 6 brush here. I hardly ever use my Neptune brush mainly because it holds too much water and I find that 
um, it can lift paint where I don't want it to lift. So um, keep that in mind. It could be me personally, <laughs> um, but Neptune brushes are wonderful if you're wanting to hold a lot of water. But because I always like that more of a dry brush um, uh, technique or effect with my mountains, doing that or being able to achieve that with a Neptune brush, I find to be a bit tricky. However, I keep working the paint and I'm using Payne's Gray here. I do love Payne's Gray for my mountains. It's a wonderful color to use for distant mountains to create to to get that beautiful distant mountain look. You'll notice they're a bit on the blue side, but they're also a bit darker. So Payne's Gray I find is really great for that. And if you hear my cat eating in the background, that is because they always tend to eat when I record these videos. <laughs> so the paint is still wet here, and I end up <clears throat> moving the brush around a little bit, and you'll see in the upper part of that right side of the mountain, as I move the bristles, it lifts the paint, but then collects a little bit as well. But I ended up liking that quite a bit because it created some texture. But you can see right here how I'm a bit rough on my brushes because I am forcing the bristles onto the page and it's separating. And then I kind of do a bit of a scrubbing motion. The paint is dry at this point now. And my second layer is using my Graby watercolor brushes. You do not need these brushes. I know I always rave about these brushes, but the reality is, it's a cheap watercolor brush. It's a very cheap brush, so if you don't mind being very rough on your watercolor brushes, then I recommend buying any detail brush. It doesn't have to be for watercolor. Um, I would say that the bristles on here um, are, they're not like most of my watercolor brushes, so you probably could use these for any other medium as well. I am not 100% sure, but I do know that the bristles are quite inexpensive, but I, what I love about them is that the, the bristles separate really easily, and I'm able to create all this texture. Now, I love a lot of texture in my mountains. You may not like a lot of texture in your mountains. The reason I do is because that's what I see in my own local mountains. They're very rocky. They're, there's not a lot of trees at the top. Um, they're very gray. So if that gives you an idea of where I live. <laughs> so I'm on the West Coast. And in the West Coast, we have a lot of rocky, rockier mountains. And those very high um, tops are very jagged. The last thing that I include are birds. These are such simple birds. There's no detail to these birds, but I thought I'd add it. And it's just the one little last um, part of the landscapes that I like to add to give it a nice touch. I found these wooden stamps that are letters, lowercase and uppercase on Amazon, and I thought it would be fun to add these. So if you are someone who journals or likes to incorporate these little things in your paintings, then definitely check them out. But that is it, everyone, for this video. I hope you enjoyed and found some value in what I shared. And these are only a little bit of subjects that you can incorporate in your landscapes. There are many, many more. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. All right. Take care, my friends. Bye.